The end is in sight for the invertible matrix theorem. Just one set of equivalent statements to go. A is invertible if and only if there exists a matrix C such that C times A equals I. This theorem's a little interesting. One of the directions is completely trivial. If A is invertible, then A inverse times A equals I. And A inverse is C. Good, no problem. Going the other way is surprisingly tricky. In particular, the obvious assumption would be that if this matrix exists, C is A inverse, but it is not easy to prove that. So we're going to take another route. We're going to prove that AX equals zero only has the trivial solution. And if we can prove this statement, then returning to this list, four and one are equivalent. So proving this is the same as proving this. How are we going to prove this? Well, now that we've had this brainwave, it's a very straightforward. Suppose that we have a solution, AX equals zero. We're assuming this C exists. Multiply both sides of this equality by C. CA is the identity, and the identity times X is X. Any matrix times the zero vector is the zero vector. Therefore, if X is a solution, X is the zero vector. And this only has the trivial solution. So we did prove this theorem, albeit in a kind of circuitous way. And we'll add an entry. To the list. The next theorem is very similar. And again, proving one of these directions is trivial. If A is invertible, then A inverse is a matrix. D such that this product is I. 
again, going the other way directly is actually quite tricky. Our guess is that if this D exists, D is a inverse, but that's not easy to show. What we'll show instead is that for any vector B, AX equals B always has at least one solution. And the reason this works is that this equation always having at least one solution is the same as this matrix being invertible. And once we've had the brainwave, once we've had the idea of proving this theorem this way, it's a piece of cake. In particular, x equals d times b. is a solution because A times DB equals AD times B. This is the identity, the identity times B is B. One last stray theorem. I've said that we won't do a whole lot with transposes in this class, but A is invertible if and only if A transpose is invertible. Um, and the proof we've basically already done, we've made the observation that if A is invertible, A transpose is invertible. So we've already gone in one direction, and this direction tells us that if a transpose is invertible, then A, which is the transpose of the transpose, is invertible. And that is the last entry in this list. For now, the book will continue to come back to this theorem for the rest of the semester.